In this episode of Pure Ocean TV, we headed down to Vero Beach Marine Laboratory to visit Pro Aquatics Agriculture Facility to learn how proper agriculture works and how it can help to reduce human impact on ocean reef ecosystems. When we arrived at Pro Aquatics, we immediately noticed giant holding tanks and the buzzing sound of water pumps, which excited us like little kids at a pet shop. We met up with David Burgett, who gave us a tour around the facility and taught us the proper methods of agriculture. He first showed us the cobia broodstock tanks, which hold the big mother cobia that are used for breeding. We were amazed by the size of the cobia in the tanks, which some weighing over 60 pounds. As we toured around, we saw all sorts of fish from pompano lionfish clownfish to look downs, permit, and ladyfish. We also checked out the entire hatchery that gets produced here. After exploring the facility, we asked David some questions about pro aquatics and agriculture. I'm James Smith with PureOceanTV.com. Today I'm here with David Reguette from Pro Aquatics. He's going to tell us a little bit of what he does around here. Well, we're a small operation, so we all do everything on site from siphoning tanks to managing data. My official title is the Ornamental Broodstock Manager. That basically entails determining which pairs are productive spawners and which are not, and ensuring that we can keep up a level of production that can supply our demand. Can you explain to us what is the broodstock? Uh, broodstock is any group of fish or pair that's spawning and producing eggs. All right, and how large are these broodstock? Well, they can vary anywhere from two inches up to 60 or 70 pounds with Arcobia. So how important is water quality to your whole operation? Uh, water quality is everything. Um, from larval care, where you've got very, very sensitive, very small organisms, all the way up to broodstock, which need very stable temperatures and respond very closely to environmental cues, such as temperature, lighting. So how often do these brood stocks spawn? It's, it really depends on the species. Uh, some like a cobia, during the height of their season, will spawn once every week or two and produce sometimes a million to three million eggs. Um, the ornamentals are a little less definite. Depending on how much you feed and how the water quality is, some good pairs will lay almost as soon as the eggs hatch. What are the effects of aquaculture on the ocean? Well, sometimes aquaculture gets a bad reputation, but it all depends on how you do it. Uh, we do a lot of on-land operations, so we really have almost no impact in the environment. We're just producing a product that doesn't have to be taken from the wild. Uh, ornamental trade is a multi-billion dollar industry worldwide, and they often use things like cyanide or dynamite to catch these fish. So by producing them here, we can ensure a higher quality, healthier fish that's already used to a uh, hand feeding or a pellet. So that way we can sell directly to the market. So how long do the eggs take to hatch after spawning? Well, that can depend. Some of the food fish, um, they'll hatch within 36 hours, 20 hours, depending on temperature. Uh, the ornamentals, again, depending on temperature, can range anywhere from two to three days all the way up to uh, seven or eight days. And those are the uh, clownfish? and Yeah, the clownfish take some of the longest for the ornamentals to hatch. But they, they very carefully tend the eggs. The male will actually sit there and clean off any dirty eggs or remove any that aren't viable. So what are some different types of eggs that you have to deal with? Uh, well. There's a few different types. We've got pelagic eggs, which are free-floating, kind of like a cobia or a look-down where they spawn in the water column. The eggs are fertilized, and then they float off. Um, you've also got demersal spawners, which lay on the bottom. They'll either lay an egg mass, or they'll lay directly onto a hard substrate. How do the tanks affect the fish's behavior? Oh, it's a pretty strong effect. Uh, the, the most important part is really to think about size requirements, shape, and also color. I mean, you want the fish to feel safe and at home, but with minimal distractions. So I'm guessing over time these fish become your pets? Oh yeah, they definitely begin to recognize people and just the fact of human contact makes them more likely to reproduce. When a fish is relaxed, just like any animal, they're going to be more productive. So what do you feed the fish? Uh, we feed a proprietary mixture. Uh, generally it's uh, low trophic level proteins, so it's better for the environment. Also with a mix of uh, top secret ingredients as well. A specialty blend? Oh yeah, we make it by hand, individually batched. So in this industry, it seems like there's still a lot to learn. Oh yeah, I mean the industry is so new that anywhere you look you can find a new project that hasn't been done. I mean just recently we produced a batch of lookdowns last year that was the first commercially done and uh, we're on track again to produce more this summer. So really I think the best part about working in an aquaculture facility is just the constant daily challenges and the, the way that there's nothing ever the same. Things change quickly and you gotta be on your game. This is James Smith with Pure Ocean TV. I'd like to thank Dave Burgett for coming out with us and giving us all this cool information on Pro Aquatic. Well, thank you guys for coming out. It's always great to show a little bit of the biology aspect of what we're trying to do and 
maybe in the end we can end up helping out the ecosystem a little. That's what we all want to do here. Oh yeah, more fish. Yep. <laughs> We'd like to thank David Burgett for giving us such an amazing tour of the Pro Aquatics Aquaculture Facility in Vero Beach, Florida. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel to watch the latest videos from PureOceanTV.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching PureOceanTV.com.